What's going on YouTube? Thanks for stopping by. My name is Michael, also known as Hyrule Dude. Today we're going to be going over part 3 of the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild walkthrough. Now in this video we're going to cover the journey to Kakariko Village. We just met King Bosphoramus and I'm here at the Temple of Time here at the top of the, uh, the temple and there is a treasure chest containing a bow. It's a soldier's bow. So I'm going to drop one of my weaker bows to obtain that and then I'm going to transport to the Great Plateau Tower. All right, so now that we're here at the Great Plateau Tower, we're gonna obtain a few items that are only available on the DLC Pack 2. Uh, don't worry if you don't have it, it's only gonna take about a minute to collect these items. From there, you can just pick up where you left off. So let's go ahead and look to the left and put a marker on this structure here. That's the Colosseum Ruins. And to the right, we're gonna go ahead and put a marker on these ruins here. And this is actually called the Colomo Garrison Ruins. So we're going to head over to the northeast first and we're going to obtain our first item that's part of the DLC pack. Now this is a very powerful early in-game item to have. Uh, so if you want to use it, great. If you want to just collect it, that's cool too. So let's go ahead and make our way towards this marker. Now for this item, we're going to have to use our Magnesis to rip this treasure chest out of the ground. Uh, let's go ahead and open it up and what you're going to find is the Majora's Mask. So this is basically going to make it harder for certain enemies to spot you. Um, and it doesn't work for all enemies like Lionels, for example, but it will work on Bacoblins and other enemies as well. So now I'm going to transport back to the Great Plateau Tower and we're going to head over to the northwest which is the red marker on our map and we're going to obtain the second DLC pack item. So the trip is a little far, but not, not terribly far. All right, so when you climb up this hill right here, you'll see that there is a Korok seed uh, trail. So if you go ahead and capture it, you'll be able to pick up a Korok seed that you can add to your batch. Now, I do want to mention that there is a Lionel in the center of the Colosseum Ruins, which is where we are now. To avoid him, just don't let him in your field of view. So as long as you can't see him on your screen, the likelihood of him bothering you is going to be slim. Not impossible, but slim. So let's go ahead and activate our Magnesis again and pull out this treasure chest. And here we're going to find the Phantom Helmet. So now the helmet is actually going to give you an increased attack power, which is uh, always good. Let's take a good look at this Lionel here, and uh, we're not going to stick around too long because he will destroy us. So therefore, I'm just going to go ahead and transport back to the Great Plateau Tower. If you don't have the DLC pack, this is where we're going to pick up uh, where we left off. So back at the Great Plateau Tower, we're going to look to the east and we're going to put a marker on a few of these locations. So you'll see this tower. Let's go ahead and put the yellow marker on there. I'm also going to delete the old pins that I was not using so I don't get confused when I'm looking at the map. And I'm going to put a pin on this location here and that is going to be... Uh, the first location that we're going to head to that's going to be our red marker. Now on our journey there's going to be three Korok seeds that we're going to pick up and before we do that let's go ahead and hop on this platform. Now I'm wearing the Majora's Mask so these Bokoblins won't even try to attack me. So that's just another added benefit to the very overpowered Majora's Mask. <coughs> Thank you. 
All right, so I picked up a knight's broadsword. Now we're gonna head over to Korok Seed one of three. Uh, that's gonna be where we place the first pin. So let's go ahead and make our way that way. All right, so let's go ahead and walk up these steps here. And you're going to see this small, medium-sized boulder. Uh, if you pick it up, you're gonna reveal a Korok seed. And we are going to then make our way to the second Korok that we could pick up along the way to the tower. If you hop off of this ledge right here and run up to the peak that's right ahead of us, uh, we're going to find a pinwheel and if you touch the pinwheel, it's going to activate a bunch of balloons um, that basically just spin around and uh, if you pop all of the balloons, you'll be able to obtain a Korok seed here as well. So here's the pinwheel spinning and you'll notice that the balloons pop out. Now the easiest way to shoot these is to really just stay in place as opposed to spinning around in circles like a madman. Um, it's really easy to shoot them at that point and you'll be able to take it down pretty quick. All right, so we got this Korok seed and we're gonna continue towards the yellow marker and we're gonna obtain our third Korok seed before we actually get there. All right, so here in this tree stump, you're gonna see a uh, flower here. And if you touch it, you'll be able to see another flower that will pop up and you just keep following the path and eventually you'll reveal another Korok seed. All right, so that's our third Korok seed, and actually there's four Korok seeds we're gonna actually get. So let me put a marker on the next one, uh, which is gonna be straight ahead, and it's gonna be right here. So I'm gonna head towards the red pin at this point. Watch out for the Octoroks that are in this water if you can, because they are very fierce. Um, so again, you're gonna see another flower. Um, of course, just like the last time, we're gonna follow the path and we'll reveal the next Korok seed. Now you could take out your Cryonis to get across if you don't wanna swim, uh, because Link's stamina isn't quite up to par at the moment. Now, there's that Octorok seed, so I'm gonna take a, a desperate measure here and just jump into the water, get this Korok seed, and start to climb this tower so I can activate it and get out of harm's way. But at this point, we have 10 Korok seeds, and they are going to come in use in this game. So if you ever see them, make sure to get them. All right, so this is the Dueling Peaks Tower. It's the second tower of the game that we're activating in this walkthrough. Uh, so let's go ahead and just climb to the top and uh, activate this tower with our Sheikah Slate. All right, so this tower actually gives you two different things. Um, and it's gonna be your extension to the map, but also you're gonna get an upgrade on your Sheikah Slate, which is going to be the Sheikah Sensor. 
And basically, your Sheikah Slate is going to start beeping every time you're around a shrine. Uh, now remember, those shrines give you spirit orbs, which could uh, allow you to do a lot of things a little bit later on in the game. So almost immediately, you're going to hear a beeping coming from your Sheikah Slate, indicating that there is a shrine nearby. So let's go ahead and head towards the sound. Um, now, if you look down, you're going to see this ledge here. So let's paraglide over there. And you're going to see some ore deposits. So let's go ahead and take out our sledgehammer and mash these open so we can collect things like flint and other stones. So this is where I am on the map really quick. Uh, and if you just continue following this ledge um, and breaking the, the stones along the way, uh, you'll eventually end up at the shrine that we are heading to. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and activate this shrine and a little tip uh, You don't have to beat every shrine to be able to transport to them If you just activate it, you can easily transport anywhere you want on the map So this is a really easy shrine. Go ahead and step on this switch uh, for the ball to fall into that bowl right there and You'll be able to activate the platform and move to the next one now this one you kind of have to step on it for uh, briefly for the ball to come back down the other platform to roll on down. And this one, you kind of want to make the ball flip up and it'll hop over into that bowl. From here, you've already completed the shrine um, and you're going to see that there's this treasure chest right here. Um, there's only one way to get it and it's really to just paraglide on over and you can then open the chest Which will reveal a climber's bandana It helps you speed up your climbing and it comes very very handy in this game All right, now that we're outside, we're gonna continue heading towards this location that says Seeking Impa. So let's go ahead and continue towards that direction. Now, before we actually get there, we're gonna do a few different things that are good to do early on in the game. Uh, it'll give you the advantage. All right, so if you look to the left, you're gonna see this shrine here. Uh, we're actually gonna just bypass that. And we're gonna see this young lady here. Her name is Sagessa. And she's gonna ask you a few questions about, about uh, you being a traveler. And also if you know anything about elixirs. Well, at the end of this conversation, she will actually give you a free elixir, which at this point would probably be your first elixir of the game. And it is a hasty elixir. She gives you the recipe and it makes you run a little bit quicker. It makes you move quicker. So now I'm going to run to this cooking pot and I'm just going to go to rest till morning um, for a few reasons. One, I like to, to navigate in the day, but also the enemies don't come out and appear as much during the day as they do at night. Now where we're resting is the Dueling Peak stable. And in this area, there are actually a lot of horses nearby. So why not make our trip a lot quicker and grab a horse um, and we'll also register it to keep it. Now to capture a horse, you kind of got to just sneak up behind him and jump on its back. And then you have to soothe the horse by pressing L. Um, and eventually the horse will get used to you and that is your horse um, temporarily. Now if you want to keep that horse permanently, you have to register it at a stable. But before we do that, we're going to have to sell some items to Beetle uh, to get some money. Now this is Beetle. If you never saw him before, he's super famous in Zelda and uh, it's a good person to know. So let me go ahead and sell some items to him to get some money. Now, I'm going to sell my gems as opposed to food or anything because obviously food is much more important. Um, so let me talk to the stable owner. His name is Tasserin. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and register my horse. I'm going to give it a name. 
And from hey. here, I can take this horse anywhere that I find a stable because they're all uh, a connected network of uh, stables in Hyrule. It's pretty, pretty cool. Ah. All right, so now that I have my horse, let's go ahead and make our journey to find oh. Impa at Kakariko Village. This is where I am on the map. I'm just going to head up that trail that's outlined right here on the map. And along the way, you're going to see this interesting character. His name is Hestu. Um, crazy guy. But this guy is like a full-grown Korok. Um, so basically, he says that he needs our help. Uh, so he lost his maracas, and these bad guys basically took his maracas. And they're right around the corner, uh, ironically. So he's just standing there. Uh, God only knows how long he's been waiting for these maracas, but uh, of course, we're here to save the day. So the easiest way to do this is we're going to go ahead and climb to the top of this rock, and I'm going to pull out my ice arrows because it's just really the easiest cheese method to get rid of these dudes. So... I hit one, and I'm going to hit the second one right there. And finally, I'm going to hit my third one right there, and I'm going to jump down and simply just push these guys off of the ledge. Now, the reason why I have to get rid of these guys first is because from there, this treasure chest will then appear, and it will reveal the maracas that Hestu has been wanting to get his hands back on uh, for, again... Only God knows how long. So let's go ahead and return these to their rightful owner, like the good citizen of Hyrule that we are. And he will be so happy that we returned it uh, to him. All right, so now that Hestu has his maracas back, uh, he has another problem. And it's that there is no sound coming from the maracas and that he needs Korok seeds to make music with the maracas so lo and behold we do have some he notices and smells that we have them on us and so then we start to offer them to him and in return he gives us additional inventory slots whether it's weapon slots or shield slots uh extra bow slots for your inventory and that is also obviously very useful in this game as it's limited and weapons do break so let me go ahead and max out everything i can and eventually, Hestu says he can no longer offer any more slots and that he has to go. So we're going to go ahead and let him go and continue on our way to Kakarika Village. So that brings me to the end of part three, which is Seeking Impa. And we have arrived at Kakariko Village, and in the next episode, we are going to speak with Impa. And then after speaking to Impa, we are going to explore the village of Kakariko. And from there, we will take our next step on the journey of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Thank you so much, everyone, ladies and gentlemen. I love you all. May God bless everyone. And I'll see you on the next video. Take care.